Welcome to Government in Focus. I am your host, uh, Director of Information and Communication, Viona Alexander-Smith. In April 2018, the Government of Montserrat and the Caribbean Development Bank signed an agreement for the Port Development Project to the tune of £14,400,000. Since then, I know a lot of work has been happening in the background to prepare for the actual construction. So in this edition of Government in Focus, I will be speaking with the project manager, Dion Weeks, to get an update on where we are as it relates to the port project. Dion, thank you for being with me today. You're welcome, Fiona. Thanks for having me. Right. So first of all, let's start with you uh, providing a background information in terms of the scope of the port development project, because we know people have been hearing about it. Um, but from you. Give us the scope and background details. Well, the background is that the, the port has been financed through two components. One component is, as you mentioned, is the UKCIF, which is United Kingdom Caribbean Infrastructure Fund, Partnership Fund, the UKCIF, which is contributing £14.4 million towards the development of the new port project, along with the European Union, who's contributing £7 million also to the port project. The UK CIF component is a grant channeled through the Caribbean Development Bank and is managed by the Caribbean Development Bank. Um, the project, the physical components of the project includes uh, land acquisition, the construction of a new port facility, which includes a jetty, mm -hmm. um, particular length of breakwater, access road onto the new jetty and deepening the harbor basin by dredging it. Um, it also includes uh, institutional strengthening at the Montreal Port Authority, equipment for the Montreal Port Authority, construction, um, supervision services, and design services. We've uh, engaged a company out of uh, Canada, Stantec, who's responsible as the engineer and consultants. Um, project management that is supported, that's provided by the Ministry of Communications and Works with we had sit the project manager and the civil engineer who's Glenroy Foster mm -hmm. and um, some training as well. Okay, so quite a lot um, to cover regarding the port project. Mm -hmm. uh, what stage is the project at to date? Well, we have, as of this week, earlier this week, satisfied the conditions by the CDB to advancing the project onto a procurement phase. And currently we are inviting uh, contractors to pre-qualify for the design and construction of the, the port facilities. Right. No. okay, so that's the stage we're at, but uh, in your previous response, you spoke about some other elements, uh, including land acquisition and so forth. Is that already done? Are we already past that stage? We're, we're in the process with negotiating with the landowner at the moment. Okay. All right. So we're at the procurement stage for the... For the main, the main works. The main works. And um, when, what is the timeline for that in terms of the, the tendering process? The procurement, the invitation for uh, pre-qualification is out at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, the return date is the 3rd of March. Okay. Upon that time, we will then evaluate the submissions mm -hmm. and we intend to issue the bidding documents for the design and construction of the port facility by the end of March. By the end of March. This year. Right. So let's break that down a bit. The design build contractor. So if we are to take it by its actual name, mm -hmm. it means that that person or that company will be responsible for designing the actual layout of the port facility. Right. Um, let, let me go into a little more yes. detail. We have on board the engineering consultant Stantec out of the Canada. Right. Um, they're a multidisciplinary engineering firm. They have, just a background, they have over 20,000 employees, so it's a significantly large firm. Mm. Um, they're responsible for advising the government and coming up with the preliminary design up to 30%. Okay. Um, they're also responsible for preparing the bidding documents. Right. Right. Then that package would then go to another entity, which is the design and build contractor, okay. they would complete the remaining 70% of okay. the design and then construct the facility. All right. Now, the question that comes to mind immediately is what happens if that design build contractor um, doesn't agree with the 30% that was already designed? Would they then 
do the entire design from scratch? Normally, the 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 thirty percent design, it's it's a conceptual stage. Okay. Um, but the 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 way that it's it's procured, it gives the contractor the scope to innovate, mm, right. and it also gives them the ability to use um, different uh, components for the construction. For example, one contractor may be stronger in a particular area, mm -hmm. so he would uh, recommend that we do it in this particular way, as long as it's um, we do our checks or the consultant do their mm -hmm. checks, and it's a robust structure and it, it fits within the specification. Right then we move forward. But it gives, the, the design bill approach gives the contractor the, the flexibility to use components that is stronger in, in his armory okay. with the idea that he would then be more competitive. Right. Now, going back to the timeline, you did mention March as being, uh, was it late March or early March? Late March for issuing the, the bidding documents. For issuing the bidding documents. And then um, in terms of the actual um, selection, when would that um, take place if you can give an indication at this w time? The, the overall process, um, we intend to have, or we're aiming to have a contract signed by the end of July right. this year. Okay, and then from that stage now, um, once that person, once the design build contractor is, is basically contracted, what timeline would that person be working towards or company be working towards? Can you give an, an idea as to you know, the timeline there? It, it's a bit premature until we get the, yeah. the, um, the responses from the contractor. Right. But we anticipate that this project would probably finish around, if it starts at the end of July, mm -hmm. around the third quarter into th 2022. 2022. Yeah. Right. Okay, so we have another year, uh, another and that year. is when the actual construction you're saying would, would be completed. Like, would be completed, yeah. right? Okay. No, so let me jump to another question then. Um, since you would have mentioned when you're thinking or hoping that the actual construction will be completed, um, you know, a lot of persons in their mind, a project hasn't really started until they actually see um, the actual physical construction mm -hmm. process, although we know that a lot of work happens in the background and so forth. Uh, I know, as you would have indicated, it may be premature to give an indication or an actual date, but can you give a, a rough idea as to when you're hoping that the actual first start of construction will begin for the port project? The all plans are that the first initiation of construction would start in the second half of this year. Second, so right, okay. Mm -hmm. So we are hopefully before the end of this year. Before the end of this year, but what we have, we have Stantec as plan as, as, as earmarked to come on island um, during the course of this month to undertake some geotechnical studies in the area where the port is going to be constructed. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to examine the actual characteristics of the soil below to, the, to ad assist in advising the design that the contractor will carry out. Right, you gave a technical term there and I just wanna break that down a little further, although you would have mentioned the soil mm -hmm. composition and so forth. So the geotechnical work would entail looking at the soil composition, essentially. Essentially right. looking at the soil comp composition and taking samples to determine the nature of the soil mm -hmm. in particular areas where we're going to deepen the harbor from about yeah. five meters, four meters down to eight meters to enable larger ships to to come into the harbor. Right. Now, we know quite recently there has been some talk regarding the the port project and based, of in, based on information coming out, it seems as if there may be some changes mm -hmm. to the port layout um, based on what was previously announced. Can you give an indication as to what some of these changes are and um, how it will affect the port going forward? Well, I initially when we did a cost assessment of the original scheme, it um, was beyond the available budget, the 14.4 four million plus mm -hmm. the 7 million, which is 21.4 uh, million pounds. Right. So we met with the key stakeholders and to determine the best way forward for the project. And we had to revise the scope downwards to fit within the, the budget envelope. Um, having done that, uh, the, the key, uh, we were very adamant in the Ministry of Works that whatever we, we attempt in the first phase must be expandable and must provide benefit, immediate benefit to to the facility at, at Little Bay. Right, 
Okay. Now, you said two things there. Um, the first phase and uh, that it must be expandable. So it means then that um, after 2022, which is what we are, you would have indicated as a time that you think it would be completed by, uh, after that period of time, there can be another phase of development for the port. The, the nature of port development throughout mm -hmm. the region and generally, it's a continuing phase of yeah. development. If you realize Antigua, is now doing some yes. major works. So a port facility um, develops throughout time. Right. Uh, what we intend to do in the first phase is to improve the downtime, mm -hmm. um, allow for larger ships such as the cruise ships to berth in the new jetty, mm -hmm. and also provide some level of protection to the existing jetty. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first phase. Um, in continuing, the second phase can be an extension of mm -hmm. that. It can be deepening of the jetty to another meter down to nine meters. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, deepening of the, the basin down to another nine meters. So it's expandable in, in all directions. Right. So at the end of this phase, and I, I have to really break it down so that persons are clear in their minds, especially persons who are visual. Um, at the end of phase one of the port development project, we will see a lengthening of the jetty. What can people visually see based on the improvements? At the end of phase one, what we're building is a separate jetty. Separate jetty. Yeah, mm -hmm. to the existing one. The existing one will remain okay. in Good. place. Right. So essentially at the end of phase one, we'll have two jetties. A bigger structure that is further out in the sea mm -hmm. with an access road along the base of the cliff to access the, that jetty. If, if you standing on the existing jetty looking out to sea on okay. your right hand side right, right. it'll take you um, there's be an access road to the main jetty further out and at sea right so the longer jetty now will be on that side on the right side of the on the right side of the existing, of jetty. The existing jetty right, right. would both jetties be used yes both jetties will be able to use and just to give you a terms of um, perspective the new jetty is 130 meters long that's mm -hmm. the intention. Yes. And the existing jetty is around 65 meters. So it's doubling. Basically mm -hmm. doubling the, the existing jetty. Also, the jetty in Port Plymouth, mm -hmm. it's 85 meters long. So this new jetty is l actually longer mm -hmm. than the existing jetty in Plymouth. So you see, wh when you gave that outline and those figures, it puts things into perspective. In my mind, and I'm, I'm sure the listeners and viewers would agree as well, because when we look at what we had in Port, um, then Plymouth. you could in in Plymouth, yes. Mm -hmm. Then you could visualize right. the length or of this one, what it would be. So based on that length, now, um, what type of uh, vessels can that accommodate? That can accommodate all the vessels that are currently calling to Montreal. Um There are one or two vessels that would be longer than the jetty, uh, but they would be able to more um, berth against the jetty. Um, with the assistance of mooring buoys or mooring dolphins. If you realize, taking you back to Antigua again, a number of the cruise vessels are actually longer than the jetty in yes, Antigua. Yes. The longest jetty in Antigua, I think it's around 150 meters, only 20 meters longer than what we were proposing. So yes. you'll be able to handle the, the jetties, that the, sorry, the ships that are currently um, calling on Montserrat. Right. Okay, so that's the physical um, side of the jetty aspect of the port project, but I know you spoke about some other elements in terms of improving, uh, was it um, improving turnaround time or improving, there were some elements of in improvement um, um, that you impro mentioned initially. Okay, improving the downtime. Downtime, there right. we go. Mm -hmm. Because a number of times, uh, even the ferry or, or the cargo vessels or cruise ship vessels are not able to dock mm -hmm. as a result of the turbulent sea conditions. Right. Um, th with the new jetty in place, the new jetty is actually higher than the existing jetty. Um, and it, we anticipate that that would reduce the amount of downtime we okay. have uh, with the with the ferries and cargo vessels and cruise ships. Yes. Okay. Very good. You also mentioned uh, in your I think the response to the first question there was uh, training, some element of training that you spoke about. Can you elaborate on that? Um, there's some training element to do with uh, uh, management and. Um, uh, health and safety for mm -hmm. the for the for the port. Um, that's an element to upgrade their 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 improve their skills and upgrade their skills mm -hmm. in, in management as well. Right. Okay. Right. I think I, I I too have a clearer picture as to how this is going to be laid out. So and you're saying this is phase one, which would 
based on the timeline that you're working towards, which should be completed by 2022. 2022. 2022. Yeah. And then following that, um, the, the port can be continuously developed and developed expanded, and expanded, as yeah. is the nature with yeah. port developments mm -hmm. across the region. Yeah. Are there any other aspects of the port development project that you wish to highlight uh, here today? Um, the other aspect we'd like to highlight or re-emphasize is that in developing the phase one, Again, we had to ensure, we made, we're adamant that the phase one is expandable. It provides immediate benefit, mm -hmm. and it also allows the cruise ships that are calling to Montserrat to be able to dock much safer. Um, we're also engaging a number of cruise agents are locally and the representative companies in the US to uh, do a stakeholder engagement. Mm -hmm so that they're also seeing what we're providing and what we intend to construct and ensuring that it meets their requirement as well. So at the end of the day, there are no surprises. Yes, 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 okay, very good. And we do look forward to hearing uh, details of the design build contractor when that individual or company is um, selected so that we could, of course, notify the public and they're aware of what's happening and um, w as it relates to the port project. If there are no other comments, I thank you so much for being a part of this discussion today. You're welcome. Thank you for listening and viewing to this edition of Government in Focus. I am Viona Alexander-Smith, and I was speaking to the project manager, Dion Weeks, for the port development project. Thanks again. Thank you.